Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps. We are obviously in Warhammer Wednesday and we're painting a space marine. So I decided to pick one of the lesser known chapters. Uh, I hope you'll follow along as the bottles of paint pop up on screen. I'm going to try and do a recap once I've talked about this chapter in question. So the chapter we are painting today is the Blood Scythes. The Blood Scythes is a Loyalist Space Marine chapter comprised entirely of Primaris Space Marines. It is a successor chapter of the Blood Angels raised during the Ultima founding. The Blood Scythes' first campaigns were in the Red Scar, having been united with their brother chapters of Sanguinius's lineage after Gilliman and the Indominus Crusade brought Primaris Marines to the Blood Angel homeworld during the devastation of Bowel campaign. The Blood Scythes have swiftly embraced the Blood Angels' traditions and have rapidly earned a name for themselves as warriors of honour, upholding Sanguinius's codes with the zeal of the newly converted. Now, there isn't actually a lot to them. Uh, they've got one notable campaign under their belt, the Battle of Acrabella, I want to say, an ongoing battle of the wider Angels' Halo campaign, the Blood Scythes bought, fought to save the Shrine World from an invasion of the splinters of the High Fleet Leviathan. The Blood Angels, Blood Scythes, the Cura Blades, I think that's how that one's pronounced, and the Flesh Eaters are defending the Shrine World with the spiritual well-being of several subsectors depending on its survival. That's their only noble campaign. Most chapters have a few under their belt. These guys only have the one. Uh, chapter colours. The Blood Scythes primarily wear white power armour, which you can see I'm currently painting with the Holy White Army Painter. Uh, they have black shoulder trims. The Inquilla, the Aquila or the Imperialist on the chest is often painted in red. And then they use the unique Blood Drop Heraldry to designate company number which is indicated on the right shoulder pad, which I forgot to paint on this one. The left shoulder pad obviously displays the chapter's iconography, which is a black scythe with a red paint drop coming down, or blood drop. I try and do that freehand later on. That's all I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> the badge is a stylized black scythe with a single or red droplet of blood falling from it. And that is it. Not a lot of background on this guy, and luckily that ended at the perfect time. Right, so the holy white has now dried. He looks a little bit grey. And talking of grey, we are moving into the Grave Lord Grey, which I'm going to use for metallic -y areas of the Space Marine's gun. I've made this very clear in many videos now. I am not a fan of metallic paints. I do use them, because sometimes you just have to. For the most part, I don't like using it. So on this Space Marine, I'm going to use it on his gun barrels, the gun magazine, the gun sights, and the weird ribbing that these Space Marines always have in their leg joints, uh, the groinal area, the abdomen. Uh, we're also going to get the antennas that he's got on him. So I'm just going to work my way around. It's not a super exciting part. I've moved down to a smaller pointed brush. I'm going to try and be as neat as possible because now that the white and that stupid holy white is down, if I mess that up, there's no fixing it. There's no going back now, guys. We are fully committed to this white power armor lifestyle. So I'm going to try and be as careful as I can. And through the power of quick editing, the gray is done. It's dry. We're moving on to zealot yellow. We are only doing the eye lenses. This is a super quick step. So while I'm trying to do that, we are going to move down the screen in YouTube. You're going to click like, you're going to click subscribe. You're going to say hello in the comments and drop me something red. I don't know what it could be, tomato. Drop me a red tomato in the comments. Let me know you're still listening. And I am going to overthink painting the eyes and it's going to drive me nuts. But I got one done, so <laughs> we're halfway there. Annoyingly, because of the way I posed him, because I thought it'd be cool if it looked like he was shooting down the gun barrel, 
His second eye is a pain to reach. But we get there, we get there. And he's starting to look the part. Once you start getting other colours on him, he doesn't look as grey as he once did. He's starting to turn white. Uh, I then grab the Grim Black. Once again, another colour I dislike using. I don't like using Army Painter Blacks. I feel they turn out very dark. Very dark grey, as opposed to a black. But it is part of the colour scheme. And I'm trying to do... 90% army painter on these. Obviously the primer was not an army painter one. And I think I use a baden black on the base just to make it black. But yeah, we're just going to carefully get that armor trim. And we're also going to do the gun and his belt buckle. Just going to try and be as neat as I can. I haven't overloaded the brush because with it being a speed paint, if I mess this up, it's going to flood into that white. And it's, it's painful. It's painful, guys. It really is painful. And then with the trim done, as I said, I'm going to go in, do the belt buckle, and also the gun casing. With little to no issues, <laughs> famous last words, we grab the hardened leather. I'm going to use this on gun pouches, straps, the belt, weird things like that. Anything that I feel needs a pop of colour to it. I genuinely enjoyed painting this chapter. Uh, initially, I, I wanted to paint a Blood Angel chapter because the Blood Angel Codex is coming out. That was my thought process. I saw the Death Company box like all of you guys. I really liked it. It made me want to paint a Blood Angel. Then I remembered I'd already done a Blood Angel, so I shouldn't double up on it. I then thought about doing a Blood Drinker. Very similar to Blood Angels. At some point, I will do Blood Drinkers but not right now. And you're probably wondering why I'm saying blood drinkers so much. They were my original Space Marine army in second edition. I did not want to paint blood angels back then, but I, for some reason I really liked the blood drinkers. So my second edition Marines were painted as them. I'm probably at some point in the next couple of years going to be painting up my second edition box set. I think I'm going to go blood angels for the marines i think that makes sense it's what the box would have wanted i'm gonna try and follow the paint guide with army painter paints but yeah i feel i'm gonna do blood angels there so at some point a primaris blood drinker marine will be painted for the collection just not yet just not quite yet so yeah i do have a second edition warhammer 40k box set with nearly all the figures. Missing a couple of marines, but nothing I'm worried about. And then we've also got those second edition orcs to paint up. So that's going to be a fun little project for probably beginning of next year. But yeah, knowing that I was going to do all that Blood Angel stuff, I knew I couldn't do another Blood Angel. So I went through the archives of all the chapters I was staring at them. There was a few that caught my fancy. Some great split schemes where they were like half red, half black. There's obviously the flesh eaters, the flesh tearers as well. There's some real great chapters in there, the lamenters. But I came across this one and I saw the white and I thought there's not enough paint guides for white that's simple and easy to follow. Obviously, I did my Star Phantoms way back in the day. It's probably over a year now since I did them. And I was just staring and staring and I kind of liked the name Blood Scythes with the little scythe motif and the teardrop of blood. It's a cool idea and it really grabbed me. The fact that they don't have much history either. There's not much fluff or lore on them. They're relatively new. It felt like a nice chapter to do. Maybe people in the future that are going to get into these because of the Blood Angel Codex coming out. But yeah, I really enjoyed painting it. It was nice. It was simple. I really just straight up enjoyed it. So up next was the Sand Golem. This only has one place on the entire model that I'm going to paint. And that is the Purity Seals. And there's only this little one on his leg. Nice and simple. Going to flood the area with paint. Make sure it doesn't spill into the white. 
take my time. So yeah, I need to know what I'm going to paint next week. If you haven't guessed, I've really got bored of the Imperium magazines. I love the figures, I just don't like going through the magazines anymore. Which sounds terrible. I really should finish the series, but I, I do about 10 and then I get bored. It's hard when it's all old rules and stuff, make up half the magazine and then there's some weird RPG stuff. It, it doesn't interest me as much. I'd rather paint a figure and have that video flop than do a magazine review and have that flop. So up next is the camo green, which we're using on the grenades. There's two on his side here, and then there's two on his chest, which are in a real awkwardly placed position. But we should be able to get them. If you're uh, trying to work out how long I've spent on this with dry time of the white to make sure the white was fully dry, we're probably in at about 18 to 20 minutes. In total, I spent 30 minutes on this model. That included the drying time on the white. It is super hot here in Ottawa, so it doesn't take long to dry. And once that white was fully down, I just kept painting and painting and painting. Didn't really have to wait too long for stuff to dry due to the fact that they're all in different areas of the model, so I wasn't really touching anything that could mess up. And then we reached the final color, which of course had to be blood red. We're going to use that on the purity seal. I'm then going to take this marine away to try and do his shoulder pad design off camera. In case it goes wrong, it gives me the chance to paint over it and pretend it didn't happen. But if you have just heard me complete that sentence, it means I'm relatively happy with what I achieved. So we'll be heading to the glamour shots. If you lasted this long, you obviously had something that you enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe and all the good stuff like that. And There'll probably be a video recommendation at the end. Please feel free to watch that. If not, and you go somewhere else, I wish you a great day. And I'll catch you in the next video soon. Cheers for watching.